Hello scholars, my name is Dr. Karis Dillon and the goal of this channel is to make academic subjects easier to understand. In the last video, we talked about types of societies. In this video, we're gonna talk about socialization as well as social interaction. So let's jump into learning about groups of people and how they socially interact with one another. Socialization is a continuous process in which social norms, behaviors, values, and social skills are taught to an individual through a social group that's similar to a person's social position. Whether you take a sociology course or you take a psychology course, both academic fields are gonna discuss the potential of social interaction and the development of personality. Scientists are not sure what combinations of a person's genetics or their life circumstances, such as their home environment, spending time with family members, relationships with peer groups, etc., determine personality and social interaction. A few psychologists, one by the name of Eric Erickson and Jean Piaget, definitely offered interesting theories about socialization and the development of human beings. Erickson believed that personality changed over time and didn't stop until the death of the individual. Erickson's theory had eight different components or stages that an individual moved through as they gained personality and cognitive development. Social aspects are definitely part of Erickson's eight stages of development. Jean Piaget was another child developmentalist who also created a theory concerning human development. It was important to Piaget that there were social interactions utilized with each child's development. Jean Piaget noted certain cognitive advances that correlated with the majority of certain age groups of children. He called the first stage the sensory motor stage. The second stage was the pre-operational stage. The third stage was called the concrete operational stage and the fourth stage was called the formal operation stage. The role of the environment plays less of a role in their theories as compared to Charles Cooley and George Herbert Mead. Charles Cooley was a sociologist who believed that people's sense of self was constructed by those around them. A person's sense of self solidified more and more as the individual recognized how other people viewed them. Cooley called this ability to see yourself through the eyes of others the looking glass self. Cooley was not the only sociologist to study the idea of self. George Herbert Mead believed that individuals gain a sense of self through direct social interaction with others. By socially interacting with others, people could begin to see themselves through the eyes of their peers, friends, family, etc. Mead believed there was a path of development that all people went through in order to gain a sense of self. Mead believed that in the early years, children attempt to gain a sense of self by imitating others and trying on other people's roles. Once a child has learned to take on the role of someone else, they may act, speak, or behave in ways they have seen that other person do. The later stage allows a child to take on multiple roles of those around them. This allows the child to feel what it's like to be different people at the same time. Children are better able to understand how groups of people interact with each other by investigating multiple roles at the same time. Not only do children begin to try on roles and discover how groups of people interact with each other, but they start to learn about moral development in the socialization process. This is how children learn about what society sees as good or bad. They also learn which behaviors help a society to function smoothly. Lawrence Kohlberg was a researcher who was very interested in learning how people develop a sense of right or wrong. He created a theory of moral development which had three stages pre-conventional, conventional, and post-conventional. In the pre-conventional stage, young children begin to experience their world around them through their senses. They interact with objects and can draw general ideas about objects that they are playing with. They're egocentric and do not understand the concept of sharing. Their own interactions with others or with objects are purely their own. During the conventional stage, young children have grown to the point where they understand basic knowledge, including counting, they may understand how to categorize certain objects into classification, and they're more apt to share with others because they've been taught to by peers and friends. They also tend to understand that their friends and family have feelings just like they do. At the post-conventional stage, this is when adults can conceive of morality in abstract ways. Carol Gilligan was a researcher who read Lawrence Kohlberg's material and wondered if his results could come out differently if both boys and girls were used in these same studies. 
Carol Gilligan believed that boys and girls had different sets of morality, which might mean differences given the outcome of the study. While conducting the study, she found that boys tended to have a justice perspective in relation to morality. Girls tended to feel more responsibility, caring, and understanding concerning the reasons given for taking part in conflicting behavior. Gilligan's studies were often criticized because of their small sample sizes and have not been replicated, so it's unknown whether or not her findings would be valid and replicable. Socialization is extremely important if cultures and societies are going to continue to thrive. By teaching culture to new members, the society is able to perpetuate their own needs and wants in relation to social norms. If new members refuse to learn and take part in these social norms, these portions of society cease to exist. The distinctive features of a society are probably those that are most needed to be transmitted onto others within the society. In America, it's really important to learn about the values and norms of democracy so that democratic nations survive. Parents and teachers are generally the individuals that have to educate younger children about these certain social norms. Social norms are easier to learn when there's aspects of them that are familiar to others. It can be a bit more difficult when the basics of material and non-material culture are quite foreign from what we're used to. Let's take a look at our three sociological theoretical perspectives in relation to structural functionalism, the conflict theory, and symbolic interactionism. Functionalists would state that socialization is absolutely necessary for society because it trains people who to operate with in society and helps perpetuate cultures from one generation to the next. Without socialization, a culture would eventually die off as its members die off. A conflict theorist would state that socialization creates a system of inequality from generation to generation by providing differing expectations and norms. Conflict theorists would state that individuals are socialized differently because of SES, race, ethnicity, age, or gender. This creates unequal opportunities for many different individuals. In symbolic interactionism, a sociologist would study face-to-face -face interactions between persons and would report their symbolic communication. It is obvious that when human beings are young children that their first experiences of socialization come from family and extended family. Church groups or school groups might also be part of this socialization. These are the first groups that will communicate various expectations and make sure the group's norms are understood. Babies will begin by being talked to and being introduced to various objects. This is not the only place socialization happens though. As a child enters the world through the projection of their parents, they will see other children running around, a host of older and younger children playing or talking. And it's interesting that families who do not have much money tend to parent their children in ways that stress obedience and conformity, whereas wealthier families tend to raise their children by emphasizing judgment and creativity. This is because wealthier parents often have higher educations and work in fields where they take part in creative problem solving. Once a child leaves beyond the protection of their parents, they enter into social institutions where they must learn new sets of norms and rules. Schools are a good example of one of these institutions. American children spend seven hours a day and almost 180 days at school. School districts definitely are places of socialization, which offer manifest functions as well as latent functions. Manifest functions are those things that school institutions are expected to introduce and teach their children, including reading, math, science, using textbooks, and conducting experiments. Latent functions are different in that they tend to teach students about the social norms or expectations of that school. Human beings are socialized no matter where we go and who we interact with. Socialization is not a one-time event and it's never short. It's a long process that sometimes takes people quite a bit of time and frustration to understand. There's also times when we as human beings have adopted values, norms, and beliefs that are extremely comfortable for us and have been that way for many, many years. There are times in our lives when we're forced to go through re-socialization. Resocialization is defined as behaviors of an individual that are no longer of use and have been removed. This may happen when a person is arrested or convicted of life in prison and has to let go of old beliefs, values, and ideas in order to survive the new environment. Resocialization can be much more stressful than a person that is just trying to learn new socialization norms within a new country or culture. 
Resocialization is difficult because people often have to unlearn certain behaviors that felt comfortable to them. Even military soldiers go through a process of resocialization when they arrive at boot camp and are stripped of everything that is theirs. Well, that's the end of our video concerning socialization. If you liked the video, please click that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I will talk with you soon.